Welcome back to What's Hot on What's Best. This week we have a brief mobile fidelity update and a report on a very extensive digital to analog converter survey. First, mobile fidelity now has three class action lawsuits filed against it. There may very well be more. The next interesting step in the litigation process will be to see whether a class is certified, I believe a class will be certified, and to see which firm becomes lead class action plaintiff counsel. Another reissue label, Speaker's Corner, found it necessary to clarify their position regarding the remastering process and issued the following press release. Nearly 700 releases since 1993 have been produced purely using analog technology, beginning with the microphone right up to the finished LP. At no time were digital files used or was digital processing carried out, except for one exception, Alan Parsons' Eye in the Sky. We pledge not to alter our commitment to the principle of pure analog. So saying that their process begins with the microphone right up to the finished LP is purely analog technology is a pretty clear production flow chart. The second major item to report on this week is what may very well be the single most extensive survey audition of state-of-the-art digital analog converters ever conducted. A very dear friend of mine was in the market for a a top-of-the-line state-of-the-art digital analog converter, and he was fortunate to be able to audition in his system, in his room, in his house, the following DACs. The DCS Vivaldi Apex, the Lampazator Horizon, the Nagra HDX, the Infigo Method 4, the Waydax Reference, the SW1X DAC 3, the Ares Surat Cassandra, and the MSB Select 2. I was very grateful to be able to tag along on this survey with him, and it was a very, very interesting process. If we start with the spectrum of liquidity and dimensionality on one end, and detail and dynamics and base punch, different ways to call different things, and crisp leading edge transients on the other end of the spectrum, uh, I would say almost all of the DACs fall along that indifference curve. Overall, I would say that there were very minor differences between and among these DACs. Uh, to make up a fake number, I would say that the variation in the sonic characteristics among these DACs was something on the order of magnitude of 10% to 25%. I think any suggestion that one DAC is twice as good as another DAC or twice as resolving or twice as dimensional or anything of that order of magnitude, I think is um, inaccurate and simply partisanship and uh, pride of ownership and not, and hyperbole, and not the reality of the audible magnitudes of differences between and among these DACs. The DCS Vivaldi was the one DAC that was the constant reference during the course of this entire comparison. To my ears, the DCS was as resolving of information of, as any of them, but often had to me the sense of a touch of dryness or what I call a menthol quality and perhaps an overemphasized leading edge which is just not my personal cup of tea. The Lampazator Horizon was the other end of that spectrum um, emphasizing to my ears liquidity and dimensionality and all of the things that I personally like tubes for. The Nagra HDX was a little bit neither here nor there. Um, it was kind of in the middle of the pack and kind of split the baby between the uh, dimensional, musical, hate that word musicality, but we all use it, uh, and um, liquidity end of things versus the uh, detail and uh, resolution end of things. Um, I really kind of split the baby in the middle. We both liked it, but I felt like if somebody wanted to veer towards the tube side of the spectrum, they would pick something else. And if somebody wanted to veer towards the maximizing resolution side of the spectrum, uh, the audio file would pick something else. But it was definitely a, a, um, a worthy contender. The Infico Method 4, a solid state DAC, actually was surprisingly uh, dense sounding and not digital sounding. Um, the proprietor of Infigo we met, a very, very nice fellow. The Waydex reference is the subject of a great deal of controversy. Uh, I found that to be equal in resolution and detail and dynamic punch as the DCS, 
but without that hint of dryness. The SW1X DAC3, by far the least expensive DAC in the group, was smooth and analog-y, but I felt that it gave up too much in resolution for the smoothness it delivered. The Aries Surat Cassandra was definitely in the Lambizator direction on the dimensional, musical, liquid side of the spectrum. Um, maybe didn't go quite as far in that direction as the Horizon did, but I very much liked it as well. Uh, that was actually the second least expensive DAC in the survey and half the price of the Horizon. Finally, the MSB Select, if somebody wants to go solid state, I found the MSB Select to be to have the densest tone of the solid state contenders, and uh, I liked it very much. My choice, if I were choosing a DAC for myself personally, would be the Lampazator Horizon because I tend to, my cup of tea is liquidity and dimensionality and that uh, slight warmth of tubes. Um, if somebody preferred the uh, technical, technical design or aesthetic design of the Cassandra, uh, you could easily go with that um, because I felt the Cassandra was very much in the direction of the Lampazator. If somebody wanted to maximize resolving power and precision and uh, a crisp leading edge transient, I think that the Wadex is clearly the way to go. I personally felt the Wadex was equal to the DCS in every positive attribute, but without the DCS's negative attribute to my ears of that sense of dryness or menthol quality. And if somebody wanted to stay with solid state but go for a somewhat denser sound, my choice would be the MSB Select 2. And in that direction, uh, for a lower price, I would go with the Infigo Method 4 or the MSB Reference, which are both in the um, $30,000 to $50,000 range. Please sign up for this channel below, subscribe for us, and I will see you next week. <music>